Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to continue our discussion of stoichiometry, specifically mole mass conversions. Today's essential question, which you need to answer completely as part of your summary, is given the number of moles of reactant used, how do you calculate the mass of products? For today's lecture, make sure you have handy your periodic table, your unit conversion table, and your calculator. All right, let's start with a quick review on determining molar mass. Remember that molar mass is the mass of one mole of an atom or molecule. All right, so for an example, what is the molar mass of sodium sulfate or Na2SO4? All right, so the first step is to list out how many and what type of atoms we have. So for sodium sulfate, we have two sodiums, one sulfur, and four oxygens. And then we'll use the average atomic mass from the periodic table with the units grams. So sodium, the mass is here, 22.99 grams. So 22.99 grams. And sulfur is right here, 32.07 grams. And oxygen, in case you don't remember it, is right here, 16.00 grams. Okay, then we add up all of these masses giving us a total molar mass of 142.05 grams. That's how you do molar mass, keeping in mind molar mass unit is grams. Let's review the use of the stoichiometry map. So our map starts at mass known and then goes to mole known and from mole known to mole unknown, and from mole unknown to mass unknown. Um, I really do suggest you use this map for each and every problem when doing stoichiometry. Um, I do realize it kind of feels like a waste of time, but the truth is this is called a stoichiometry map, and the point of the map is to keep you from getting lost. So it is actually a very useful tool. All right, conversion factors. We have three potential conversion factors for today. The first one is called the mole-mole ratio. And we use the mole-mole ratio when going from mole known to mole unknown. Or if you want to look at the map, from mole known to mole unknown. This is when we use the mole-mole ratio. And remember, the numbers from the Momo ratio come from the balanced equation. Okay, so again, going from mole known to mole unknown, you're going to use the coefficients with the unit mole from the balanced equation. All right, the next possible equality we could be using is one mole known equals the molar mass of the known. Molar mass, the unit is grams, and this is the molar mass we get from looking at the average atomic mass on the periodic table. So um, we would be in this area of the map here, we would be at mass known, going to mole known, to be using the mole known equals molar mass known. And then the third equation is going from one mole unknown equals the molar mass unknown, again, in grams. And you would be in the mole unknown to mass unknown area to be using that equality. All right, and then I want to point something really important out here. You will note that for these, these two equations here, 
the mole is one mole, one mole, okay? We do not get this information from the balanced equation, okay? You're always going to use one mole, and then you're going to calculate the molar mass from the periodic table, okay? So we use the periodic table for these two equations, not the balanced equation. All right, let's do some mole mass stoichiometry. Right, how do you do it? For each stoichiometry problem, write out the rule. Um, the, this rule here, mass known to mole known to mole unknown to mass unknown, and use it, use it as a map. Then just use the three-step method that we've been using all along. So let's get into this. Let's do a practice problem. So our example is calculate the number of grams of NH3 or ammonia produced from 4 mole of hydrogen. And you're given a balanced equation. Okay, and if you remember, our first step is always to write the, the, the question as a math problem. So what do we know about? Well, we know we have 4 moles of hydrogen. So that's our known, 4 mole. H2. And our question, what are we looking for? We're looking for number of grams of NH3. So that's our unknown. So there's our math problem. All right, so the next step is to fill out our map. This is pretty much the only part of the problem where you really, really, really need to think. So we have our, well, let's not do that. We have our known, which I'm going to circle in pink, and our unknown areas of the map. So let's start by filling in the known. We know, we know, we have 4 moles H2. Well, in the known area, we've got mass known, and we have mole known. Well, 4 mole H2, that must mean it goes in the mole area. So that's what we know about. And next up is our unknown. Our unknown is going to be the thing associated with the X and we're looking for grams NH3. So blank grams NH3. Okay. Hopefully you guys note that there is a box between where we're starting our known and where we're trying to end up our unknown. And this is the mole unknown area. Okay, it's not possible for us to just jump right from mole known all over mole un unknown and get and calculate mass. We have to go through mole unknown area. So we know we're looking for some sort of mole because that's what's in the box here, right? Mole. And it's the unknown, which is still NH3. Okay, so when we do our calculations, we're going to have to calculate mole unknown before we can get to mass unknown. And honestly, that's what makes the map so handy. It, it just shows you, once you get it set up, it shows you exactly what to do. All right, we now have the math problem. We have our map set up. Ooh, almost set up. I hope some of you pointed out to me that in my mole known area, I forgot to write my actual molecule that I know about, which is H2. Sorry about that. All right, so again, we now have our math problem. We have our map. Now we can start the problem. So we're going to set up the grid, and I'm going to align my grid with my map. I'm hoping that it'll keep me from getting lost. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just drop whatever that it's in that box right down. So basically, write my known. Formal H2 over 1. So we have departed this box. We're at mole known, and we want to go to mole unknown. How do we do that? What equality do we use? Well... This, this first one here has the words mole known and mole unknown, just like in the, in the, on the map right here. Look, whoops, 
mole known, mole unknown. So I suggest we use that one. Mole known equals mole unknown. And remember, we get that from the balanced equation. Okay, so looking at our balanced equation up at the top left, um, our known, we know from looking at this box right here, our, mo our known is H2, which is right here. And our unknown is right here, NH3, NH3. So our equality is going to look like 3 mole. Remember, there's an invisible mole after the coefficient in the balanced equation. 3 mole H2 equals 2 mole NH3. All right, now we need to set, we need to put these numbers into our grid, setting it up so that our units cancel out. And so that looks like we could put the 3 mole H2 at the bottom and the 2 mole NH3 at the top. And let's see if that works. Mole H2 crosses out mole H2. And next step, let's look where we're at right now. Right now, what's not crossed out is mole NH3, which is actually mole unknown, mole NH3. That's where we expected to be. So, so far, so good. We're on the right track. So again, we're at mole NH3, which is where we expected to be. However, we're not actually done yet. We need to get all the way to mass unknown. So how do we go from mole unknown to mass unknown? Well, let's look back at our equalities. Which of the equalities has the terms mole unknown and mass unknown in it? Looks like it's the last one here. Mole unknown equals mass unknown in grams. So we'll be using the equality one mole, one mole, not the number from the balanced equation, one mole equals the molar mass in grams. So one mole of the unknown equals molar mass of the unknown in grams. And our unknown is NH3 right there. So we'll be using one mole NH3 equals the molar mass of NH3. How do we calculate the molar mass of NH3 again? We're going to add up the mass of 1N and 3Hs. And the mass of an N is 14.01 grams. And the Hs are each 1.01 grams. So we're going to end up with a molar mass of 17. 0 0.04 grams, let me get rid of this stuff, grams in H3. Okay, again, we need to put this in the grid, setting it up so our units cancel out. And since we have mole and H3 here at the top, we're going to need mole NH3 at the bottom. So one mole NH3 on the bottom and 17.04 grams NH3 at the top. All right, let's see if our units cancel out. Mole NH3, mole NH3. And now referring back to our map, we are right now at grams NH3, which is mass unknown, grams NH3. So looks like we set it up right. All right, so all we need to do now is just solve. So we're gonna multiply across the top. So we're gonna have four times two times 17.04 grams NH3 giving us, if I did this correctly, 136.32 grams NH3. 
3. And when we multiply across the bottom, we end up with 3. And from there we divide, giving us 45.44 grams NH3. And that's really all there is to it. It's not too hard as long as you're really, really careful. All right, we need to try another problem. Please don't quit yet. Um, this problem is a little bit different than the first problem, so it's important that you continue. All right, so first thing we need to do is write out the math problem. And to write out the math problem, we need to know what information we know, what information we don't know. So it says here that if we have 625 grams, of, wow, that's just terrible, Fe3O4 is produced in the reaction. How many moles of hydrogen are produced at the same time? All right, so what do we know about? We know we have 625 grams of Fe3O4, and what we're trying to find out is how many moles of hydrogen. So our known is 625 grams Fe3O4, and that equals x moles of hydrogen. And hydrogen is diatomic, so we always need to write H2. Okay, now we need to fill in the map. And I want to remind you that I know filling in the map is a pain, but if you learn to fill out the map, it, it that then that's the only place you have to think. Everything else is just plug and chug. All right, so we need to look. We have to figure out our known and our unknown. So our known this time is um, Fe3O4, sorry. And what do we know about our known? Well, grams. We know grams. Grams would go in the mass section. So our known is going to be 625 grams of Fe3O4. And our unknown is H2. And what we know about our unknown is we know the number of moles. So that means we're going to we're going to go to mole unknown blank mole h2 and darn it we got a box in between which means we need to figure out that box as well well it's mole so we know it's going to be mole and it's mole known well our known is fe3 o4 so we're going to have blank mole fe 304. So although we don't really care about the number of moles of Fe304, we're going to have to figure it out along the way to get to our mole unknown destination. All right, next is the grid. And I'm going to try again to align the grid with my map. And the first thing I need to do is put my known in. So six... 625 grams Fe2O4 over 1. There you go, first box out of the way. So now we're going to go from mass known to mole known. Mass known to mole known. So we need an equality with the terms mass known and mole known. Let's check them out. And it looks like we will use the equality one mole known equals the molar mass known because it has both the terms mole known and mass known. So again, one mole known equals the molar mass we get from the periodic table known in grams. So our equality is going to be one mole Fe2O4 equals the molar mass of Fe2O4. So we're going to end up with, we need two Fe's and four O's. 
And Fe has a mass of 55.85 grams, but there are two of them. Oxygen, 16.00 grams. So let's calculate that. And before we finish our calculation, let me fix my fairly significant mistake here. How about Fe3O4? So there's going to be three of those giving us a mass of 231.55 grams. And let me get rid of some of this. Of Fe3O4. I just really want that to be a two. Okay, so now which one goes on the bottom? This guy here. So we'll have 231. 0.5555 grams Fe3O4. And that means on the top is going to go one more Fe3O4. And let's make sure we set this up right by crossing out our units and make sure they actually match. Grams Fe3O4 crosses out grams Fe3O4. Let's check where we're at now. We're at mole Fe3O4, which is where we were expecting. So we're on the right track, and but we're not done. We now need to go from mole known to mole unknown. What equality do we use going from mole known to mole unknown? Let's check it out. Well, it looks like we can use mole mole ratio because it has the terms mole known and mole unknown. And remember, the mole mole ratio comes from the balanced equation. All right, so our known we know from our map is Fe3O4. So we're going to have to be using Fe3O4, and our unknown is H2. So we we'll need to be also using H2. So our equality is going to look like 4 mole H2 equals 1 mole. Fe3O4. And now we need to set this up into the grid, setting it up so our units cancel out. And since we have mole Fe3O4 on the top, we're going to be using mole Fe3O4 on the bottom, giving us one mole Fe3O4 which means the top is going to be whatever's left over, which in this case is 4 mole H2. Okay, let's double check ourselves. Mole Fe3O4 crosses out mole Fe3O4. We are at mole H2, which is where we wanted to be, which means we're at our stopping point, and all we have left to do is calculate. Okay, so we're going to start by multiplying across the top, which means 625 times 1 times 4, and that gave me 2500, zero, zero. we still have this part here, mole H2, and multiplying across the bottom, 1 times 231.55 times 1 gives us 231.55, and from there we divide. And that gave me 10.79680, and some more stuff. Mole H2, and I would probably want to round to two, or two digits after the decimal. Um, not absolutely necessary, but if I'm going to do that, I'm going to be dropping the 6, which is 5 or bigger, which bumps the 9 up to a 10, which bumps the 7 up to an 8, 
So for my final answer, I would have 10.80 mole H2. All right, that is how you do mole mass conversions. It's honestly not that big of a deal if you're really careful. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.